Hello and welcome. My name is Thea Cannon and this is my 121st testimony for the Elohim of Yaqua. Yeah. Oh, I'm already getting deception. The beast has come, been coming at me flat out trying to throw me, but no, it's you. Ooh, which that shows me that some of the things they are showing me is quite difficult to see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to start with a prayer, please. Yes. Because as Yeshua said, this is about the beast and her agenda. Yeah. Fuck. That there was the enmity between the woman's seed and the snake as written in scripture. Yeah. She uses me like that. It's usually at me. And as Yeshua said, it started at my 3.33 year mark in my spiritual battle. Yeah. When Yeshua taught me and through the Father and the Royal Kokodesh how to out her and they taught me spiritual warfare tactics, yes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot in that, but she was asking me to start with a prayer the Father and Ship. Yeah. So, yeah. Yaqua, please, in Yeshua's mighty Kodesh name, and by the power of your mighty Royal Kokodesh, Yaqua. Could you please put your hedge of protection around me, Yaqua, your good angels? Yeah. And may I speak your words here on earth as it is in your home, Yaqua, in the mouth of you, Yaqua, our almighty Father. Yeah. In Yeshua's mighty Kodesh name, and by the power of your mighty will, Kokodesh, Yaqua, I wish to be a vessel for you. Yeah. And speak for you here on earth. Yeah. I know I'm over-explaining myself. Yeah. In Yeshua's mighty Kodesh name, for a reason, yeah, Yeshua's telling me, yeah, people are asking why, yeah, hmm, yeah. In Yeshua's mighty Kodesh name, otherwise known as Jesus, yeah. And by the power of your mighty rural Kodesh Yaqua, otherwise known as the Holy Spirit, yeah. And by the most powerful of all, Yaqua, our Abba, our Almighty Father, Yaqua, our Elohim, which is the Almighty Father, Yeshua, on the right in our thoughts. Yes. And the Royal Kokodesh, the Holy Spirit, which resides in your heart and controls your body language when you allow it. Yes. Don't go against your body language, no. That's blaspheming against the Holy Spirit, the Royal Kokodesh. Yep. Because you've just controlled your body language and went against the Father and his Royal Kokodesh. It was trying to deny the words as they were spoken. And you thought that you would control your body language? You don't even get a trial for that? No. No. Read your scriptures. You're straight to oblivion. Yep. Because you dared to control your body language and to go against the Father? Mm hmm That's blaspheming against the, the rural Kokodesh, one form of it. Yeah. Yeah. It was through Stephen Benoon who explained another form of it. Yeah. Mm. Well, as Yeshua said, yep, yep, yep. As Yeshua said, yeah, no, that you want them to go research that, yeah, yeah. And by the most powerful of all, Yaqua, please, can I be your vessel and speak your words here on earth as they are in your home, Yaqua? In Yeshua's mighty Kodesh name, and by the power of your mighty rule, Kodesh Yaqua, yeah. And by the most powerful of all, Yaqua, our Abba, Yaqua, our Elohim, and Yaqua, Ehad. Yeah, screen's rocking a bit, sorry, my dog's popping a pant and saff. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Her name is Sapphire. I named her that before I read that in scripture, that I would be given a Sapphire to protect me by them. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. And that's where they've got me to realise and come back to the Satan's agenda. Yeah, because that's one of Satan's things. She's told her crystal people and that, that there's some sapphire crystal out there that can protect them. Yeah. And then they start thinking that there's crystal people, which there actually is. Yes. But not how you think. Yeah. See, the, it does say in scripture that the beast will show you what she's done, but twisted. Yes. As Yeshua said, what do you think your movies and books are based on? Yes. Fuck. Yeah. 
<laughs> the awkward view she based in Yaku's dying. <coughs> Twisted. Yeah. See, as Yeshua said then, I could sit there and go through each movie and so forth and show you the direct line or the truth with their help because I'm just a vessel and I wouldn't know these things if it wasn't for Yeshua on the writing my thoughts. Yes. And the Father directly above. And his real cockadess, which been guiding me and showing me when I get things wrong. And I've been willing to look within to seek the real truth or answer from you sure on the right in my thoughts. Yeah. Because the beast is on the left in your thoughts. Yep. Yeah. As Yeshua said, this one's for the atheists too. Yeah. Because, oh, as Yeshua said, as Yeshua. He's pointing out as Yeshua. Yeah. Yeah. Life journey. Life journey. Yep. Okay. Throughout my life journey, every time I've tried to broach the subject, talk about Yeshua, Jesus, or the Father, throughout all my life, yep, I was ostracized for it. Yes. An outcast. Yep. There was rumors going around me before I even, oh, gosh, how long was this? 26 years ago, yeah, well not that long, 20 years ago, yeah, because I wanted to talk about Jesus with people, a rumour started going around my hometown, yeah, that I was known as the God lover, the Jesus lover, and they all called me crazy and didn't want to speak to me anymore, yeah, fuck, mm. yeah, yeah, so I did go quiet and I didn't really talk to anyone, yeah, for a long time, yeah, because I got scared of people's reactions because of those reactions from my hometown people, yeah. Because I grew up with non-believers, yeah. So, that gave me a great perspective on an atheist and their out view and why, 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 why. Look, I can tell you from every conversation that I had with an atheist to someone who claims they don't believe but they really do, yeah. Why do I say that? Because I see you are looking for the answer, but you just haven't been shown. Yeah. Would you please give me an ear, as Yeshua said, and just hear me out and what I'm about to say. Yeah. Because it affects you. It affects me. It affects everyone in this world and throughout all of their creation. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> See, I want to do this for them, and I don't assume, don't want to let them down. Hmm. Yeshua's teaching me something here. Yeah, that I've just got to trust that they're going to give me what I need. And that, yeah, yep. We've been sitting with it, Yeshua and I and the Father, for the last three days. Yeah, because I was going to come out with it, but then there was something else they showed me today. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and, and it's given me a broader view on all of it, yeah. As Yeshua said, they got me to look at it from <sighs> I had a dream, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before my counselling, yeah. And in this dream, you know, I didn't understand it at the time. I thought it was going to be my future and something that I was going to do because I did have dreams about my future back all, th all throughout my life, yeah. Years in advance, yeah. Yes. I have three types of dreams, as Yeshua said, yeah. One where I'm actually awake and alert in it and thinking in my head, yeah. Another one is where I'm outside my body and I'm watching myself interact with people. Yeah. The third one is where I wake up and I recall all of the dream, but I wasn't awake in it. No. Yeah. Yeah. And they're usually ones about my future. Yeah. Because I find myself in the future and I'll be like deja vu and I know what's going to happen. Yeah. And those people that were in that dream, I didn't know at the time. And then, yeah, when I find myself in that moment, it's like, oh, 
Well, you were who were in my dream all those years ago because I seem to forget them until they're on me. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Until I'm in the moment. Yeah, as Yeshua said. Yeah. But this one I do remember. I was like, I was alert in it. Yeah. And I'd taken it for a literal meaning. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so this dream, I found myself arriving in a car. I believe I have my dog, but she wasn't with me. She was, I didn't even have a dog at the time. Yeah. That's the weirdest thing of it. Yes. It was a shepherd too. It was in the back of my car. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you, Yeshua. I'd only just realised that. Yeah, I just knew it was a dog. But I didn't get her out. No. I'd been called there by the police. Yeah. This was my dream. Yeah. And I suppose that's what started me down the avenue of counselling. Yep. Fuck. Yeah. Was that dream? Yep. Fuck. Yuck rebukes you, beast of Babylon in Yuck's name. Okay, so in this dream, I'd been called to someone's house. It was the house I, was, I ended up living in. Fuck. I'd never piece that together. No. It literally was a metaphor. Yeah. Fuck. Ugh. Yuck rebukes you, beast of Babylon in Yuck's name. They only just showed me that. Yeah, I'd never pieced that and seen that. It was the house that I ended up living in. Yeah. Because something changed my life in that house too. Yeah. I had a cancer scare, but I also had someone come into my life. Yeah. Yeah. Who changed my perspective on people. Yeah. In a huge way, as she should have said, yeah. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, so in this dream, hmm, I got called to the house. Yeah, explain it. Yep. She was telling me too. And there was police everywhere. Yeah. And there was also child safety officers, women. Yeah. And they were talking to the police officers. They'd been called to this house because something horrible would happen there. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't even, I just was acting in it. So I wasn't really conscious. I must have been watching myself. Yep. Yep. Because I wasn't really thinking. I just remember, I remembered it all and woke up thinking, why was that said? Why did they say that? Why did they say that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I got to this house. I was watching myself and I walked straight through the door. Two police officers tried to stop me. Mm. But I pushed through them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then it was a young one. He tried to say, hey, what are you doing here? But the child safety officer or someone stepped in and went, no, no, no. Leave her. She takes care of them. Yeah. And I found those words really bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was the next part of the dream. Yeah. I found a little boy. I was walking to a little boy. Six or seven. Yeah. And he was sitting in on the grounds, holding his knees and crying and not looking around. No. And I found myself approach this young boy and kneel down yeah to him and i told him i offered him love yeah and told him it was not his fault what had happened no i told him that bad his parents yeah that he trusted had taken advantage of him yeah and they were naughty for doing that to him yeah yeah, and that he had nothing to be ashamed of because he'd never done anything at all to bring that on. Yeah. And then I told him that I was willing to love him the right way and I would never hurt him. No. 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 <laughs> yeah. I told him that they were bad people for what they'd done to him. 
and that I'd make sure that no one ever heard him like that ever again. Yeah. Yeah. And then in my dream, I offered him my arms to a cuddle. Yes. <laughs> that little boy rose his head and ran it into my arms. Yeah. And cried on my shoulder. Yeah. As Yeshua said, I picked him up and walked straight out and went and put him in my car. Yeah. And that was where it stopped. Yeah. I used to have thoughts about, oh, am I going to open up a foster home? Am I going to open up an adoption centre? Yeah. I'll go back and do counselling so that I can help kids like that. Yeah. But they've shown me a bigger meaning than the one that I was interpreting for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Because <clears throat> what I noticed, yeah, throughout my life journey, when I spoke to people, atheists, who didn't believe, yeah, they blamed God, Jesus, for everything bad that had happened in their lives, yeah, yeah. So they never wanted to hear me because their ultimate answer was, how could God how could Jesus allow this all to happen? Yep. Didn't want to hear me at all. No. They blamed God and Jesus for all the chaos and the bad things that had happened to them. Because at the time, like Yeshua said, they were a little kid in their head. Probably screaming out for God and Jesus to save them. Yeah. Not understanding that it comes down to people's free choice and what they've shown me throughout my life journey is that the Father Yahqua and Jesus, Yeshua, was in good people all around you. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to get them to listen to you. Yeah. But they also had the beast in their head telling them that they were stupid because they'd probably gone through the same thing and she was telling them they were overreacting. And they'd look stupid if they came over there and accused that person of doing that to you. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, as Yeshua said, you listen to her from the left telling you that it's all God and Jesus' fault because they didn't step in and save you when they were trying through good people who were battling in their head with the beast themselves. Yeah. Who was telling them that they were imagining it. It wasn't true. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. It happened to me throughout my life journey. Yeah. I suspected. I seen it. I could see it in their eyes, the kids' eyes, the way they were acting. They were looking down. They weren't looking at anyone. And the way that the parents were interacting, the mother, it was almost like she was suspicious because I could see her always thinking in her head about her partner, the father of her child. Yeah. <clears throat> it was at an airport, but I had the beast in my head at the time telling me that I was stupid. I was overreacting. That's because that had happened to me. I was going to look crazy. They were going to call the police on me if I got up and said something. Yeah. And I didn't realise at the time Yeshua did want me to say something, yes. I think he just wanted me to walk up and ask that little boy, are you okay? Because something's not right. Yeah. Because he was sitting there looking down and he looked so sad. And he was scared of him. Yeah. It was his body language. The way he was holding himself, all huddled in, looking down, and then sort of hearing him, and you could see the little, oh, like, yeah, fearful that he's going to get raped by his stepfather, as Yeshua said. Fuck! Yeah. You see, and I am so sorry that I did not seek healing back then. Yeah. See, I can't. I can't playing myself and that's what the beast will do yeah yeah she'll try and make you feel bad for the fact that you didn't know what you were doing back then 
But I've learned now, as Yeshua said, and if I do see a little child reacting like that, the same way I did, yes, I will speak out for you now, regardless of the consequences to me. As Yeshua said, pushing past those police officers, fuck, the thought from the beast always at me that they're going to arrest me if I went up there and accused somebody of pedophilia. But I wouldn't be accusing them, no, as Yeshua just said. Probably from a beast perspective, because she want you to create an argument or create that false narrative in your head. Yeah, so you've got to know who you're listening to, yeah. And what, what are they portraying in their body language? How are they coming across? Do they look scared? Do they look happy? Yeah. Are they in their head a lot? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. As Yeshua said, people that haven't had trauma and things happen to them, not really in their head as much, no. Because you let in demons and the beasts and the fallen angels when you put trauma on people, yeah. So those kids are sitting there listening to the beast and the fallen angels and the demons telling them that they are disgusting, they're a piece of shit because there's someone they trusted that took advantage of them. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not. You're not. No. The beast played that on me for a lot of my life. Yeah. And it doesn't help, as Yeshua said, when people are out there pushing that narrative too. Oh, that, you know, you're worthless now because you've slept with someone or someone's taken advantage of you when you're a child so you're disgusting yeah that does not help one you're just feeding the beast's narrative in their head because as Yeshua showed me someone listened to the beast in their head and chose to hurt you as a child they got caught up in their flesh they didn't give a shit about you or your feelings at the end of the day all they cared about as Yeshua said was getting off yeah yeah that was not your fault at all do not let the beast in your head tell you you did something to deserve that because that is untrue you're a child you see, the beast is in your head telling you all the time that that was God and Jesus because she doesn't really want you to question her. Yeah. And as Yeshua said, yeah, this is the beast's gender. She'll create that trauma. Then get in your head and tell you that it's all God and Jesus' fault and she's the one that did it to you. Yeah. And now she's the one that's leading you away from God and Jesus yeah, because she knows you can get healing and help and you can cut her off because she's the one that led those perpetrators into your life and made you a victim and brought that trauma on you, those demons on you and now she's in your head telling you that God and Jesus are what? Bad? And that you want to rebel because God and Jesus did that to you? No, she did it. And that's how she deceives you. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's like with tarot cards that they showed me in meetings. They don't mean to, as Yeshua said, they haven't been shown. They didn't read their scriptures. No. They ran with the beast in their head. Yeah. Thought they had some special power when really they were talking to demons and fallen angels and the beast. Yeah. And the thing is, they bring up the family's past and they know it really well. You know why? Because it was the demons and the fallen angels and the beast that got them to do what they did to their victims. Yeah. And then they follow them all throughout their life, telling them that they're a piece of shit for the choices they made, that they can't seek redemption, and it was God or Jesus' fault for not stopping them. Fuck. Yeah. Who? Yeah. See how the beast plays you and you don't even realise she is. I am not Yeshua. Am I Yeshua? Do you think I'm Yeshua? I'm still Thea Cannon. But I have his morals, beliefs, and boundaries. Yep. Yep. But if anything, I know who I am now. Yeah. Because I was able to cut that beast off. And all the thoughts that she was playing on me, trying to tell me they were mine and they never were. Fuck. Yuck rebukes your beast in Yuck's name. Yeah, she never told me. Oh, that's your thought, the Thea. No. 
These thoughts just kept coming into my head over and over and over until I questioned them. Yeah. With Yeshua and thought, why am I having these? Yeah. But you see, the beast would try and get you to hold on to it and go, oh, does that look good? Does that turn you on? Can you feel that in your flesh? See, the beast and the flesh. Fuck. Yucca rebukes your beast of Babylon in Yucca's name. Yeah. At the end of the day, like Yeshua said, it's free choice. Yeah. Yeah. So the beast agenda. Yep, Yakwa, Yeshua, yep. So they showed me that, yeah. The earth was created with nothing but clay and earth. Yeah. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. Man was created from the earth. Yes. He was made from the dirt. Yes. Yeah. So, when you realise that, and then you realise, okay, so they've shown me. I didn't find this out. It was my past and all the Beast Babylon stuff that I learnt and through scriptures, and they got me to see the Beast pattern. Yeah. Never would have learnt it and picked through all of her stuff if it wasn't for you sure on the right in my thoughts saving me. And the Father directly above, and his real Kakadesh present with him, us all. Yeah. Because the Father disagreed with me as I spoke and while I was looking to the left throughout my spiritual battle. And they got me to hold that thought captive and test it. And here I am today. Yeah. Fuck. Yuck rebukes you, beast in Yuck's name. It's very annoying. She does it on purpose to put you off from listening to them. You fucking bitch. Yuck rebukes you, beast in Yuck's name. As you should said, you just learn to ignore her. Yeah, Father's keeping count. He is going to have his wrath, as written in scripture, scripture, and his, as Yeshua said, vengeance. Yes. Fuck. Yuck rebukes you, best in Yuck's name. So, yeah. Okay, how do I explain this, Yeshua and Yuck? Well, please help me. Yep, yep. I'm wondering how to say it right, yeah. I've got a lot that they've shown me, yes. From all different sources, yes. But it fits within scripture, yes. And it explains why the Father said what he said, yes. Mm -hmm. mm. You see, throughout my spiritual battle, they taught me that every scripture has a reason. Yes, understand the reason, yes. As Yeshua said, he was there from the beginning. He, when Adam and Eve sinned, they ate from the dead tree. Yes, the dead fig tree came into the garden, the serpent, the fallen angel, the beast. Yes, she deceived them with her dead fruit, offering them her dead fruit. See, she was the tree of good and bad knowledge because she was the only one that would think of that shit. Fuck. Yuck rebukes your beast of Babylon in Yuck's name because her father would never do such things. Fuck. Yuck rebukes you, beast in Yuck's name. As Yeshua said, the Father knows all. But he would never think to do those things that the beast has done to us all. No. As Yeshua said, it was in the beginning because she was jealous of the way that they loved us. The humans, yes. We were their favourite creation. She became jealous. And loved the way that we worshipped them. But her worship is twisted, yes. And she wanted that for herself. So, yeah, yes, so she came against them and offered her dead fruit in the garden because she was after Adam's apple. After all, where does a man's words come from? His voice. Fuck, is Adam's apple moves, as Yeshua said. Yeah, Ooh. remember she wanted Adam and his seed to corrupt the seed so that she they would speak for her and her dead tree. Fuck. Yeah, and not Yeshua. See, when they were left the garden, what did the Father offer them? Because they were naked in their thoughts. Suddenly they knew good and bad. Yep. And the beast and the fallen angels are at them flat out from the left. Fuck. Just like she does to us. Yeah. See, but they didn't really know. How do does one defeat the beast in their mind? Yeah. So the Father offered them fig leaves from the good fig tree because he was offering them good fruit 
Well, at the time, he was covering their sin yeah. with his fig leaves from his good fig tree. Yeshua, on the right, in your thoughts. Yes. <laughs> it's a spiritual battle, it always has. Yeah, yeah. And his father said, in the end, the big tree, look, a lot of Satanists have gotten that all mixed up, twisted, remember, she twists things. Yes, she's twisted the whole Bible and made her own stories out of it. Yes, and people have run with her. Yes. So, what the father really meant by that scripture? Yes. There's a big tree in the garden. He said, now, once the big tree is cut down, what will all the beasts do underneath? You see, the fallen angels have been hiding underneath the beast of Babylon. Yeah. And as they pointed out, because I know I've, they've gotten me to research a lot and do a lot of looking into histories and things like that, which is all the Beast of Babylon stuff, most of it, yeah. Okay, so when you figure that out, yeah. Oh, he took that from me, why? Because it isn't, it isn't. They've been working behind the scenes the whole time, yeah. These lost ten tribes of Judah, as Yeshua said, yeah. Are all the inhabitants of the world? Yes. Fuck. Yeah. They were never lost. No. Let's read new scripture too. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. And as Stephen Benoon keeps saying, they were speaking in tongues when Yeshua and the Holy Spirit, the royal Kakadesh, came down after he was risen up. Yeah. And he gave out his rural Kakadesh to everyone, the fathers, yep. <clears throat> they were speaking in tongues, yes. Because they were able to speak all the different languages of the world. None, some of those people in there had no idea what they were speaking, no. Because Yeshua and the father through the rural Kakadesh were speaking through them. And they'd allowed it, yeah. You see, people walking around outside were from all over the world. And they're wondering why these people are speaking in their language then when they'd never done it before. Yeah. Yes. Oof. Thank you, Stephen Benet. Loved your understanding from Yeshua. Yep. And the father, Yakwa. Mm. Through the royal Kakadesh, as Yeshua said. Yeah. He's a willing vessel and he's willing to listen. Yep. Learn as we all are. Yeah. Yeah, that's where you've got to be humble and realise that you don't know all. Yeah. And that father knows best. Because he's in you. And he's real. Kakadesh will tell you if you're lying. So, are you willing to acknowledge that you got it wrong? And the father knows best. And look within to find out why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Fuck. Yuck rebukes you, beast in Yuckle's name. <clears throat> the beast's agenda, the beast's agenda, the beast's agenda. Why am I finding this so hard to speak about? Because I don't want to get caught up in my emotions and start thinking about it. See, the beast has been trying to get me to actually think about what the details of it, yes. Where they have shown me, and it hurts to see it all, what she's done, yeah. But, that's where, yeah, Yakwa keeps saving me. Yeah, Yeshua does. Yeah, but Yakwa can step in. When the beast is coming at me with some pretty foul thoughts of what she's done, because she likes to brag about it in your head and show you exactly what she has done. Yes. So they, are, they may show me the pattern. And then I realize, oh, wow, she did that. Then she'll try and throw that at me. Yeah. So I end up seeing glimpses of it. And it hurts to see what she's done. Yeah. So I have to look to Yeshua. And sometimes oh, I'm caught up in my emotions. I'm crying a lot. Yeah. Fuck. It's hard to see it. Yuck rebuke she was by mine in Yuck was name. So what they've shown me that I keep doing is oh, when I'm at that point that I am nearly hyperventilating because of the shit she's throwing at me. Yes. I will look up. 
to the Father, and all thoughts get cut off. It's like it gives me a reprieve, a break. Yeah. 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 It's like I'm begging him, please. Yeah, we're just no more thoughts. Yeah. And I get to catch my breath. Yeah. 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 The Father is all powerful. It's written in scripture. Yeshua is there as our best friend, guide, mentor, yeah. He's my partner, yes. But yeah, Yakua can step in and overrule when you really need it. Just look up for that break. Yeah, yeah. And as Yeshua said, then I'll breathe. And I'll breathe in for Yakua. Yeshua, the Ruach Kakadesh, I'll hold for Yakwa, Yeshua, Ruach Kakadesh, and I'll breathe out for Yakwa, Yeshua, Ruach Kakadesh. Yeah. Yeah, as Yeshua said, I'll do that three times. Yeah. While looking to the Father and calling their names as I do it. Yeah. As Yeshua said, it centers me and ground again. Yeah. Yeah. And stops the beast from her attacks. So I can get more level head. And stop jumping into my emotions. Because I also feel what they feel too. And I can get overwhelmed. By their sadness. Yes. I have to ask them to stop. And they know this. Because I can't handle some of the things they've shown me that the beast has done. Yeah. I will look to the father and just be like, no, let me pause with it. Because even them telling me, I end up in tears. Yes. Because it happened. Yeah. Fuck. You have to abuse your beast in your name. I cry for those people. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. Not the ones that you're thinking of, no. You see, I had to go back before Noah. Yeah. And the flood. Yeah. Yeah. You see, and at the end of the day, to me, all people are innocent. Yes. If not shown the right way. Fuck. Yeah. Yuck rebuke your beast in Yuck's name. How could they know they were doing wrong if no one ever showed them that they were doing wrong? Yeah. It's like Yeshua has gotten me to see with my life journey. And, there, you know, I didn't know that I was listening to the beast and reacting from past trauma, which allowed her in. Yeah. Until I sat down and spoke with Yeshua and he started telling me and showing me what proper boundaries were, what proper morals were. And when you realise what they are, you will realise, wait up, yeah. I've never really had that shown to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's something new. I didn't know that that's how it was explained and that's what people were meant to do. Yeah. Because you, like you sure said, you probably got it into your head that it was all God and Jesus that did bad in the world, but it wasn't. God and Jesus were the ones in people, in the good people in that world, trying to fight back against the evil. But they kept getting labelled as Satan. Yeah. Because you kept blaming them for all of the stuff that Satan and the fallen angels were doing. Yeah. 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 So as Yeshua said, I had to go back before Noah. Yeah. Why? They got me to watch this gentleman. Yeah. No. 
not at the moment, no. They're not giving me your name right now, it's something else, something more important, sorry, yeah. Thank you for listening. You gave me the knowledge that I needed, yeah. Praise to the Elohim of Yahweh for you and Yeshua's mighty Kodesh name, by the power of your mighty rule, Kodesh for listening, yeah. Okay, so what this man was showing me, this gentleman, yeah, was the rituals for the beast followers, yes, yeah. So we're talking back in the days before Noah, when there was nothing but evil on the earth, so no one was ever shown good boundaries tonight. And it was only Noah and his family that chose to listen to Yeshua, yeah, and their seed was uncorrupted. Because their family had been listening to the Father and Yeshua unknowingly. Yeah. Since the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, it's in families. Yeah. And you see, we pass it down through our lessons. Sometimes we don't even know we're listening to the Father and Yeshua in our head. You'll find yourself, you know, like, you might find you're looking to the right all the time. You were always listening to Yeshua. You just never knew it. Yeah. But now you can also find out how the beast was playing you and playing others and show them for them. But you need to, you know, say hello, Yeshua, thank you. You've always been there. How cool. I really like the conversations we've had. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Ooh. Because you got them thoughts from him. Yep. And you chose to engage with his thoughts. Yes, with your own thoughts. So you had a conversation? Yes. See how the people on the left will have that conversation too. If they engage in the beast thoughts, then they start having a conversation with her about that thought. Mm. Mm. Yep. Yeah, as Yeshua said, I'll see them in everyone. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was in my spiritual battle. The base did you on play me for a bit with that, trying to tell me that they were reincarnated versions of Yeshua and Jesus and things like that. Yeah. Watch it. Learn your scriptures. There is no such thing as reincarnation. Yeshua was risen up by the Father. Mm. And all the reincarnation theories when it comes down to the interpretations of the first part of the completed canon. That was Pharisees interpreting it that they had Elijah and so forth. No, they did not. They had the Father. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, you know, those theories never reasoned out because Elijah wasn't going to be reincarnated into a man to hold his whole life for a five-minute conversation that was needed in the Bible. Mm-hmm. See how they were speaking in tongues and they were speaking. You know, that person would have had no idea at the end of the day what they just said to that person in the Bible. Yeah, they were used by the Father and Yeshua. Yeah. They spoke in tongues and had no idea why they said what they said. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeshua was different when he sat on that mountain and they seen him speaking with them. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeshua is our saviour. Not you. Fuck. Yaka rebukes you, beast, in Yaka's name. Mm. Because it's written in scripture that in the end we were all to the Father. And to you sure in our minds. We will look for the Father's rule, Kakadesh, to see if it is agreeing with your words as they are spoken. You will look to you sure in on the right in your mind to find out the way to the Father. Yeah. And like the Father said in Scripture, if you do not acknowledge you sure on the right, you do not get to the Father. No. Because Yeshua knows the way, he was a perfect example and demonstrated the Father perfectly when he was here on the earth. Yeah. Mm. So, yes, yep, peace agenda, before Noah's Ark, flood, yep. So, you were talking about the fact that they used to do their sacrificing, yeah, yeah. You see, and it was what the Father revealed to me about the earth was originally just dirt and clay, humans, yeah. So where was crystals? Yes. Iron, metals, yes. All these things, where did they come from? Because, you know, your scientists will tell you they've been here. Have they? No. 
You can see it in the layers of the rock and so forth in the soil. Yeah. So, this is the most disgusting thing that I have had to be shown. Yes. See, when Michael looked down, there was nothing but bloodshed everywhere. Yep. And the Nephilim had come down. Oh, well, the fallen angels had come down and mixed their seed. Yeah. Yeah. So you find out that the fallen angels, as described in scripture, all angels, yeah, they shine like topaz, that angels made from topaz crystals, yes. They shine like gold, they're made from gold, yes. <sighs> yeah. Shine like a diamond, yes, fuck. Yuck or rebuke, she beast of Babylon and Yuck was saying. Are you seeing it now? This was the Nephilim lines. And your gold, your uranium, all of these things that you thought were natural are your Nephilim lines. Yes. Yeah. Now the beast. <sighs> Got him to people's minds. And told them that they could come out with the latest, greatest technology. All they had to do was slaughter their offspring. Yep. To gain the, the gold bones, the uranium bones within them. Yes. You see, it wouldn't cleave. They didn't come out completely looking like the fallen angels, no. The fallen angels, as written in scriptures, had four faces. Yep. Three were animals and one was a human. Yes. Hence the beasts under the tree, what will they do? They were the faces of the fallen angels. There were seven watches, seven days of the week, seven principalities of darkness. You fight against the seven principalities of darkness in your mind, fighting at you from the left. They've been here since the beginning. The father set us all up and gave them the honour of being the first watchers to watch through their planets. Yes. See the reason? Yeah. All throughout history and that, they've used these planets and spun them for their own twisted versions. Yes, to control the people. So, for the first seven days, yes. As they showed me on the seventh day, the Father rested. He rested on the earth. Number seven is the earth. Number eight is Michael. On the eighth day, Michael looked through his looking glass. And what did he see? Nothing but bloodshed. Because the Father knows all but he gave everyone free choice even the angels too because it said they chose in their own thoughts to go against the father's way yeah so when they were looking through the planet they chose to start talking to the humans in their head giving them lessons as it's written how to fight each other yeah see they were telling them it was for power and all the rest of it and i suppose People were enjoying what they were offering. Yeah. Power over one another. Yeah. Yeah, it started in the garden. With the beast coming down. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's the Father's, is written in scripture. One day in the Father's world is a thousand years here on this planet. So 7,000 years went, I went through on this planet before Michael looked through on the eighth year, the eighth day, the eighth thousand year. And the Satanists and the cultists use that number and they believe in cycles, yes. But you see, the Father also believes in cycles too, yeah, yes. And you see, it was out my, throughout my spiritual battle that they, when they realised, when they got me to see that I had seven deadly spirits come on to me throughout that battle, Mm. they were doing the same thing as written in scripture they were playing me with what Yeshua said the sexually immoral trying to get me to bow to idols and everything this was all happening in my mind and the seven of them used all of those patterns on me and took in turns yes I was lucky enough that I was listening to Yeshua and the father in my head and I was able to pick through them all and I'd learnt enough scripture yeah to save me they saved me couldn't have saved myself, even if I'd learnt scriptures, yeah. The 
beasts will still play on you. Yeah. You need your shoe up to help you. Yeah. This is written in scripture. She is an ultimate liar and deceiver. Cunning. Yes. She's played us all till now, hasn't she? Yeah. So as Yeshua said, yes, they were showing me but when they were sacrificing people before Noah's Ark, yes, because you could sacrifice your offspring, use their bones, melt it down, and you could have gold, you could have your electricity. Remember gold-plated Egyptian pyramids? Fuck you, bitch. Yuck, rebuke, she beast of Babylon in Yuckle's name. How do you get that girl? You gotta slaughter your offspring. Fuck you. Yuck rebuked you, Beast of Babylon in Yuckle's name. Yeah. Then they got me thinking about the Incas. Ooh. When the Spanish arrived. Did you see the Incas didn't give a shit about the girl? No. They arrived there. That girl was already there. They cared more about their cocoa beans. That was their gold. Yeah. Then the Spanish come along. Did you notice that the Spanish had to melt all that gold down and renamed it before they brought it back on their ships? Fuck! Yeah. Yuck rebukes you, beast of Babylon, in Yuck's name. Because what did they find? Skeletons of gold. Fuck! Do you think the people would have been accepting of that if they'd brought back skeletons of gold? And how would they explain that? That they were the fallen angels. Nephilim line. You fucking bitch. Yuck rebukes you, beast of Babylon, in Yuck's name. Remember in scripture, before Noah's flood, they'd all been corrupted. Bar Noah. Yes. So everyone had slept with a fallen angel. Yeah. Yeah, and as they got me to see why the royalty loved keeping it in their family, because as they found out, you start mixing the Nephilim line with the humans, you don't get the gold anymore and everything, and the uranium and all the other things that out their bones used to be made of. No. Fuck. Yuck rebuke she beast of Babylon in Yuck's name. So as the beast told them, keep the blood strong. Fuck. Yuck rebuke she beast of Babylon in Yuck's name. How sick, eh? Yes. That they would slaughter each other because they're all listening to the beasts and the fallen angels in their heads. Well, at the time, the fallen angels and the beasts were walking amongst them. Fuck you, bitch. Yuck, rebuke, she beast of Babylon in Yuck was saying. They wanted their worship, remember? And then you start looking, as you should have said, I looked at a bit of history. They always seem to be fallen. Cast down by the people throughout all the histories, you fucking bitch. Yuck, you should be the Babylon in Yuck's name. So then you start to realise, shit, they showed me. Where's gold found there? Where's uranium found there? At these sacrificing places, as this gentleman pointed out, the gold deposits, the uranium deposits, are right near their sacrificial, sacrificial spots, you fucking bitch. Yuck rebukes you, beast of Babylon in Yuck was name. Hmm. Yeah. That uranium deposit. Was that skeletons by any chance? You fucking bitch. Yuck rebukes you, beast of Babylon in Yuck was name. But they also got me to see because the Noah's flood. Yeah. Not all, you know, like there's some large gold deposits, so that's showing you just how many people they sacrificed into these mountains. That's where your gold comes from, your silver and so forth. Was from their sacrificing. Yes. Do you see the amount of people that they were slaughtering? Michael looked down and all he could see was bloodshed because they were just offing them into the mountains. You fucking bitch. And eating their flesh. Fuck. Yuck rebukes you, beast of Babylon and Yuck was saying. Yeah. So, as Yuck was said, it was mostly, yeah, I suppose the first line, yeah, you should have said, yeah, the first line that made her came in good with the fallen angels and the beast, yep. That were doing this to their people, yep. After all, as you should have said, their bones and that were strong. Fuck. Like the movies, twisted. Fuck you, bitch! 
Yakur Vig should waste to Babylon and Yakur Stein. So as Jacques were and you sure are pointing out to you will find them in other places too because you've got to remember the flood came on. All the inhabitants of Earth. Yeah. Bar Noah was the only one to actually still have human bones. Fuck Yak rebukes you beast in Yakwa's name. See there's something they got me to see. When you find dinosaurs, there's no fucking oil around them. That theory don't stick. Does not span out. No. Fuck you, bitch. Yaku abuse you, beast in Yaku's name. And the bones that you do find from your giants and so forth, they were Nephilim lines. But you see, by that time it had worn off. Yeah. Couldn't get the gold, uranium, the silver out of their bones anymore, could you? Fuck you. Yaku abuse you, beast in Yaku's name. See how sick she is? Yeah. Because as written in scripture, they were sitting up there through their looking glasses and that and laughing about the fact that their people that were worshipping them were slaughtering each other. Yeah. That was a game. They they made a, a chess game. Yeah. Seven fallen angels, principalities of darkness, looking through their planets, their watching glasses, made their stargates to come here. People never left, no. Because that doesn't reason out. You go into Yakwa's planet, Ooh. you're there for 30 seconds, you come back here, you're dead straight away. Fuck. Yakwa rebukes you, beast of Babylon in Yakwa's name. They never would have got to explain what they, where they were and what they'd done. Oh, I'm thinking of Stargate in another scenario, you fucking bitch. Yakwa rebukes you, beast in Yakwa's name. Twisted. Yeah. Yeah. So after Noah's flood, yes. Yeah. They got thrown down. Yeah. Their stargates got shut off. Yeah. Do you know that there were certain dates, and that's why these elite and that show up at these gates all around the world on these dates, hoping that the fallen angels will come through again, because they still believe in their heads to, that they are fake gods. You fucking bitch! Yaku abuse you beast in Yaku's name. They still believe all that bullshit she told them. Yeah. Because they haven't learned that. No. They haven't bothered to test. Because the beast was in their head telling them that they are royalty. Related to the Nephilim. The chosen ones. For the beast and the fallen angels. Who will lead the world. Oh. No. It's what the beast wants in the fallen angels. They want pedophilia bestiality. Yeah, fuck you, bitch. Yaku rebukes you, beast of Babylon, and Yaku was saying. Yeah. So can you imagine it? They were slaughtering each other. They were making love to the animals. Yes. And the children. Yes. Fuck. Yeah. Yaku rebukes you, beast in Yaku was saying. Because it also says in scripture that the people cried out. Yes. No one was trying to tell them. They thought he was stupid. Fuck. Until the floods came. Knock, knock on the door. Fuck. It's also about your show too. Yeah, I just realised that your show through that. Yeah. So it's pretty sick when you realise that they did that to their people and that all the gold, see, and then she's turned around and use that the beast system really is a beast system you think about it I'm sitting in a Nephilim carcass right now fuck you Yaku rebukes you beast of Babylon in Yaku's name we had no idea did we there's not many people that live by the old Jewish way where they're still making their furniture and everything from stone tools you fucking bitch Yaku rebukes you beast of Babylon in Yaku's name yeah do you realize everything is the Nephilim bones their money system is based on their ancestors' bones. Yep. Fuck you. Yaku rebukes you, beast in Yaku's name. You see, the sacrificial places will have probably still have the skeletons, yep. But the floods. Can you not see the layering effect? How it's squished it all down, you fucking bitch. And would have 
rumbled and tumbled it all over the earth and you have chunks of bone and crystal and gold going here there and everywhere you fucking bitch yuck rebukes you beast in yuck was name mm. and then as you should have said a good layer of dirt down on top and yeah six thousand years pass fuck yeah. Cycles. Yes. 7,000 years. Yeah. I'm coming up to eight. Fuck. When Michael did. Yeah. So it's technically 16. Yeah. Fuck you, bitch. More than that. Yeah. Why, Thea? Because you made the earth. You made this, you made that, and on the seventh day you rested on earth. Yep. Then the next seven days, you had the principalities of darkness looking. Yep. So we have 14,000 years so far. Fuck you, bitch. Yuck rebukes you, beast, in Yuckle's name. And then we have a next cycle, which Michael came in on, which was technically the eighth year, but yeah. Well, that was the Noah's flood and all the rest. Yeah, I know, it's hard. Yeah. When you know that and you don't listen to the beast shit, then you've got to sit down and really think about it and think, okay, so Yakwa made the earth in seven days, yep. Then the next seven days, the principalities of darkness were watching. Yakwa knew all, they had free choice, yep. He's known since the beginning what would ultimately end up happening, yes. <laughs> we all get free choice, yep. Yeah. And unfortunately, not many people who have listened to you, Sure and the Father. Or, uh, yeah, a lot have. But the people that were put in power were the beast followers, you fucking bitch. Yuck rebukes you, beast in Yuck's name. Yep. And they were always telling you that you were crazy and stupid for thinking the way you did because you were listening to the Father and Yeshua and didn't want to listen to the beast and her shit, you fucking bitch. Yuck rebukes you, beast of Babylon in Yuck's name. See? Hmm. Mm. They're a lot of fun. Yeah. The beast isn't. She doesn't actually let you think for yourself. See, that's the false narrative out there. Yeah. Because she tries to play off in society that she's free and you can do whatever you want. Yeah, you can. If you want to do what she wants to do. Yeah. You sure teaches you good morals, beliefs and boundaries. Yeah. And then you become like a mountain you will not move. Because you have him teaching you these things. And you find yourself and you find joy and happiness in life. Because suddenly you're free from the beast on the left and the fallen angels. Who are playing you unknowingly in your life. Yeah. Fuck. Yuck rebukes your beast in Yuck's name. Because Yeshua, after he's taught you the way, the good morals, beliefs and boundaries... And you've healed and learnt through him. He's good counsellor, mentor, best friend. Yeah. You share your innermost thoughts with each other. Yeah. Yes. Not flesh. That's the beast. You share your thoughts. Yes. Yeah. It's, it was an intimate relationship because there are some thoughts in your head that you will not share with anyone. Yeah. See? Intimate thoughts. You can share them with the Father and you're sure and they'll help you to figure them out. If you can't share them out loud with others. Yeah. Fuck you, bitch. Yuck rebukes you, beast in Yuck's name. Yeah. Some things only I share with Yeshua. And the Father. No one else. Yeah. Fuck. You know, the people that do their work on themselves and work through Yeshua and the Father actually have their book closed. Yeah. No one's allowed to judge them. No one's allowed to look in their books. So that's telling you something. I knew that. And I chose to open my fucking book up for all to see. That was Yeshua. Yep. I did not have to do that, no. I chose to do it for all of you. For them. Because I didn't think it was fair that the beast was misrepresenting them here on the earth. And because of that, people were not willing to give them a chance in their head. Fuck. Yuck rebukes you, beast in Yaku's name. Yeah. How would you like it if someone kept accusing you of something that you never did? 
and no one in the whole world would listen to you no matter what you said. Fuck! Hmm. Yaku picks you beast in Yaku's name. See? Will you please give them a chance? Yeah, because they love you and they always have. They've just been waiting for you to listen and acknowledge them and to learn spiritual warfare tactics because you got brought to me for a reason because they love you and they want you in their lives they want you in their forever and ever and ever kingdom do you understand that you're here they want a personal intimate relationship with you sharing your innermost thoughts helping you counseling you guiding you mentoring you so that you can be happy strong yeah Fuck. Yeah. When the beast comes at you, you've learned. You will stand your ground and say, no more beast. Yuck, we're a pig shoe beast in Yakwa's name. And when you've done that all, you will wish to sing their praises because they helped you see life in a new way. Fuck. Yuck, we're a pig shoe beast in Yakwa's name. Yeah. They also don't want me, you to look to me at all. Don't look to me, please. Come to me for your lessons. Come to me to learn what I, they've been teaching me. But you go back and do your own work and then show us all, please. Because they get me to watch you all too. Now, if I thought it was down to one person and only me, we'd all be buggered. I know it comes down to you me and everyone in the whole wide world willing to listen to you share in their head and the father and to teach us all what you're learning from them yeah yeah see it could never be one human being it had to be like it's written in scripture that we will all look to yeshua and the father in the end yes because once you learn the way and you're healed and you're a strong good person with good morals and beliefs and boundaries in place. Yeshua will hand you back to the Father. Yeah. And as Yeshua said, it is written in Scripture too, that once Yeshua does come, He's getting taken out of your heads. Yeah. Because He was your best friend, your mentor. Yeah. Your high priest in your head to pass you back to the Father once you're healed and learnt the way. Yeah. The Father's rural Kakadesh will remain in us all forever. And we will be having conversations with the Father instead. Fuck! Yes. Yeah. And Yeshua will be living amongst us too. And he will be our high priest in his forever and ever kingdom of Yaquas. Yes. Yeah. Because once you learn the way, like Yeshua said, he passes you back to the Father and it's written in Scripture. Yes. So do you know how much harder it is going to be once Yeshua comes out of me? Yes. <laughs> it's written in Scripture. The upper rebukes your beast in your uncle's name. Mm. So, you're not going to get a chance to have him in your thoughts on the right? No. Yeah. So do you work now, please. There's not much time left. That's another one. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. Yakwa? Yeah. <clears throat> I will be due the same date that I consummated my marriage. Fuck. Yeah. Yuck rebukes you, beast of Babylon, in Yakwa's name. Next year, not much time left. No. Fuck. Yeah. Another one, you should have said. Yeah. Ew. I know, it's quite bizarre. The dates, I know. It was like, of all the dates to line up to. Yeah. Oh, what's the name of that Jewish holiday? I'm sorry. I. Yeah, they're taking it from me, yeah. When Yeshua resurrected from the grave, yeah. 
Yeah. The day after. Monday. Yeah. Mm. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Because that was the day that I consummated my marriage on the Monday. No, no, no. Fuck. Oh. Friday. I even need to go back and see. Okay, wait up. Because I had three visits with Yeshua. Yeah. And time seemed to just oof in together. Yeah. Like that's a year went by and it felt like it was a week. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that I went up. I got Friday on my mind. Because I was hearing that song. Yep. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Monday when he came down to me. Yeah, fuck you, bitch. And joined in with me on the Monday. Yeah. Because the first time I went up, I went in my dream. And I was awake in it. Yep. Then I came back down and thought about it for a bit. Yeah. The second time... I was climbing a mountain with Yeshua. Yeah. I was walking up the mountain. He was following behind me and I found him checking out my bottom. Yes. <laughs> yes. Spun me out. I didn't understand at that time why he was doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we did something on the mountain when we got on top. We were talking for a bit, but then other things happened. Yes. Ooh. Then the third time he actually came down. And we became one in the flesh together. And he's been with me ever since. Yeah. That's all written in scripture. Mm. Hmm. Go to Alan Hall to really understand that meaning. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. He explained it better. But I, yeah. Oh, it's a hard one. I'm getting hot. Got the heat on. So, yeah. You finished? Yeah. I'm about to run out of battery. Thank you, Yahweh Yeshua. Yeah. It's all throughout my spiritual battle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there are some things that you are getting me to think on. You want me to? Yeah, go there. Tunnels, 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 tunnels. Fuck you, bitch. The upper rebuke, she wears the bubble on in Yakwa's name. <clears throat> okay, I did a lot in that early part of my spiritual battle. I don't know if I was actually talking about some of the things that I was doing or whether I kept them quiet, yeah. Because I thought I was working with Donald Trump, yeah. Fuck you, bitch. The Aqua Rebukes, you beast of Babylon. And Q, yeah. And I thought at that time that I was some big secret agent, but I don't know. It was really weird because I found myself up above the earth and looking into a looking glass, yes. And I was given free will. By Yeshua and the Father. It was like Yeshua was standing with me. And I was holding his hand. And the Father and him were giggling with what I was doing. Yes. Because at that time. I thought I was helping cue this secret army and Donald Trump. And Donald Trump started giving me secret code words back. That they had given me. Yes. So he was confirming what was happening. Mm-hmm. And then Q was going on about it too, yes. That I was finding secret underground cities and helping them to eliminate, eliminate reptilians, yes. Why were they giggling and laughing? Because I had a big hand, Yuckle's hand, and I came down through the looking glass and they told me that reptilians were evil and they didn't have a soul. So I was squishing them with my fingers, the big hand. In their underground tunnels. Yes. And I got a big gooey, yucky guts on me. And I was like, you yuck. And they giggled about that. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yuck. If you choose to have one. Yuck. That's name. Yeah. And then I got really inventive. They'll allow me to. Because I didn't like the gooeyness. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, who is she wasting up his name? Yeah. And I was also, yeah. I turned them into fireworks, you fucking bitch. Yes. Yeah, who is she wasting up his 
<laughs> I had to blow up into fireworks. Non-poisonous, non-harmful fireworks, yeah. <laughs> you can see why they're laughing, yeah. Yaku Bushu is Yaku's name, yes. Yeah. It's my imagination, yeah. Because then they started telling me that, oh, look, I even felt bad because Beef was trying to tell me that I created this big bomb at one stage, but it wasn't me, no. It's her followers, yeah. She was trying to break me and make me think that I was altering things in the world. Yeah. Fuck you, bitch. Bad things, yeah. Yuck abuse you, best of bubble on yuck was name. So then I started seeing, like, yeah, in this they had, like, machines in the sea that could push to, to zombies over cities. Yes. Out in the sea. And they're, like, big waves underneath that they'd just push every now and then, which would create the waves. This is what I was seeing throughout this, yeah. Then they showed me that Japan, yeah, had a heap of rockets all underneath the ocean, all around them, waiting to shoot off in any direction that they wanted to, yes. Ooh. I turned them into fireworks, yeah. I turned all the shit into fireworks in the end through them. We even turned weapons into fireworks, yeah. Because people started trying to shoot nuclear weapons, so I turned them into... Non-lethal pretty fireworks, yes. <laughs> but the tunnel. Sorry, I'm running out of battery and I've got to get this done and they want me to think about this because that was all just, yeah. The tunnels were there, yeah. But as they've shown me, you've got to look at the oldest parks in your cities and they're going to have old waterfalls because in this vision, i never seen kids or anything getting taken down, but they kept taking me to Melbourne, Australia into a park and I've never been there, no. And I kept getting taken to this waterfall and it was like a woman with her arms up. Sometimes I'd pull her arms or leave her, yeah. Sometimes I'd push a button and the whole waterfall would open up, yeah, fuck. And there were underground cities underneath the parks, yeah. And they were reptilians because I was going through and squishing them all with my fingers, but I'm not quite sure what's in there. But they were telling me that the children were being taken down into these tunnel by them. Yeah, they'd come up overnight and take what they could and then go back down in there and no one knew, yeah, fuck. Mm. Yeah, and that's when I was helping Donald Trump and them. I went through Brazil, I went through everywhere, man, going through secret tunnels. And at the time, too, there was all these things on cue about them getting blown up and that. And, and they liked the pattern red, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, because I had to keep pushing it on all the keypads. Red, green, yellow, red, green, yellow. Fuck you, bitch. Yuck, a rebuke, she beasting up was saying. Yeah. All right, we are going to finish with a prayer. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, Yaku said, running out of battery, yeah. And I've got to finish with prayer, yeah. So Yaku, left hand down as the beast was cast down, right hand up as Yeshua was rose up by the Father, Yaku. So please, Yaku, in Yeshua's mighty Kodesh name and by the power of your mighty royal Kodesh, Yaku, could you please forgive your creation its debts as we, your creation, forgive our debtors? And please, Yaku, we thank you in Yeshua's mighty Kodesh name and by the power of your mighty rural Kodesh for leading us away from the beast of Babylon from the left and the fallen angels in our thoughts, the dead tree with the dead fruit. Yeah. Thank you, Yaku, in Yeshua's mighty Kodesh name and by the power of your mighty rural Kodesh, Yaku. And Yaku, please, in Yeshua's mighty Kodesh name and by the power of your mighty rural Kodesh, Yaku, could you let your wrath be completed here on earth as it is in the Malhut of you, Yaqua, in Yeshua's mighty Kodesh name, and by the power of your mighty rule, Kodesh, Yaqua, and by the most powerful of all, Yaqua, our Abba, Yaqua, our Elohim, and Yaqua, Ehad. As Yeshua said, they love you, you didn't know, please don't let the beast hold you in that shame, get up and fight back and look to Yeshua. Because he came down here because they love you all. And they want a relationship sharing your innermost thoughts. Yes. Love you. Thank you. Yeah. From Yeshua. From the Father. And from me. Hallelujah. I agree. And as Yeshua said through his followers. Shalom. Shalom. Love you all. Thank you. Yeah.